throughout my time living here, I've seen relations between Japan go up and down, um, but mostly down in the last few years since the um, President Xi Jinping came into power in China. And now it's like you open the newspaper, it's like World War Three. it's coming next Tuesday, and it's like, oh. Wow. Hello and welcome to the Abroad in Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad, and we're joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, Mr. Pete Donaldson himself. Pete, how are you doing? What's going on over there? Uh, <laughs> well, um, I d- had no idea we were doing a podcast record, so I turned up half an hour late. So I'd like to apologise uh, in front of the uh, Abroad in Japan universe and listenership uh, to Chris and say, sorry, Chris, I didn't realise... <laughs> Uh, because I didn't write down my calendar properly, <laughs> uh, and also I I just needed that little half an hour lie in. Uh, it's now seven o'clock in the morning, and we're now recording the <laughs> Broad Japan uh, podcast, which is fine. So, um, for to get me up and about, I've got some A W root beer. Why don't we have root beer in England? Is it a thing in Japan all that much? Why don't why why um, isn't root beer in every goddamn drinks fountain in every goddamn um, burger place in the whole of the UK because root beer is the superior drink. It is pretty good. Whenever I go to uh, Canada with Charlotte, I always get a uh, Barks root beer, oh, different brand. Yes. NW's all right. Barks, Barks is where the action is, but I have an unhealthy addiction to root beer. Oh. Whenever I go to Canada, I drink like an ungodly amount and I feel awful afterwards because <laughs> my body's like 90% we have- root beer and sugar. Yeah. Well, we have like um, we have dandelion and burdock, don't we? Which is kind of similar, but it doesn't have that wonderful sort of chemical sort of medicine taste to it, which I really respect <laughs> in a drink. If I had my way, I'd drink that sort of um, banana antibiotics that kids drink twenty four seven. Banana it's delicious. antibiotics. Do you remember what when you were a kid, you used, to have, you used to have antibiotics. If you had a fever or something, they'd give you antibiotics before they realised that antibiotics is really problematic to give you loads of it. And they'd give you it and it'd be banana flavoured. Were you born in the 19th century? What is this? What do you mean? It I've was antibiotics and it no. tasted like banana. It was delicious. And I just that want everything the, to taste like that. That's the north-south England divide right there. Yeah, banana antibiotics maybe. up in North England. My God. <laughs> I feel bad that you say, oh, I had a lie-in. I got up at 7. I had a lie-in. Mm. I got up at 10.30. I can't. I've, I've got into a bad habit already. The first few days this year, I was getting up at like 7. And it was like the best thing ever. And sure enough, yeah. my schedule just gradually went back round, as it always does. Mm. I hate it. I hate myself for it, and I just wish I could get around it. Do I lack self-discipline? I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I don't think so. I think I it's more just it. that you um, stay editing. up all night editing videos. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the real issue, yeah. isn't it? That <laughs> might be part of it. By the way, my friend, yeah. uh, a friend approached me the other day and said, I didn't know you liked the Spice Girls. I was like, what are you want about? The Spice Girl, where's this come from? And apparently we talked about it on the podcast last week or something, which I've forgotten. Oh, and yes, we, we did. We Girls. reviewed, we uh, very um, uh, problematically reviewed how sexy each Spice Girl was, I seem to recall. <laughs> oh, we basically <laughs> said that when we were children, which ones we found more attractive. And I won because mine was correct. What was it? You said Jerry Halliwell, right? Jerry Horner. Jerry. It was uh, Jerry or Scary Spice, really, I guess, isn't it? Scared? No, no. Emma Bunton, no, all the way. No, Emma Bunton. You're just the one, by, the you, one that's just all cute. So it different. doesn't say boo to a goose. <laughs> I don't think I've ever uh, met a single birthday, Spice Girl. For my birthday, I want a cameo from Emma Bunton, and that will mm. make my birthday complete. That's what I want. Are any of the Spice Girls I, on cameo? Uh, no, I want you to literally go into London and <laughs> Find go into your old London. radio station and be like, "Oh, yeah. Emma, do Chris a video." Just like you yeah. do with Brian Cranston. What I want, I can push, push my way celebs. through reception. Just sort of go. I don't, and I don't work here anymore. <laughs> but I've got to get to a Spice Girl. I've got to get to Emma Bunton. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Wave you, wave you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not seen you in a while. Not seen how extreme you've become, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Probably man. fine. I, think, I realise though, I've, I've become um, recently, like in other episodes, I talked about Thunderbirds and all this stuff from the mm. 90s. I mean, Thunderbirds was yeah. filmed in the 1960s. It had a resurgence in the 90s. And like, I realise I've been mm. going back to my childhood in the 90s and revisiting oh. certain things that get me nostalgic, which is A, the Spice mm. Girls, and B, Thunderbirds for some reason. And it That's made good, me realise the, ni- the 90s were good, and then it was all downhill yeah. from there. 
Uh, well, I shop. think there's a real, obviously, a, a massive resurgence into naughty stuff, but also like naughty stuff as well. There's quite a lot of. Um, I'll go to quite a, like if I had a choice for my perfect night is yeah. there are quite a few like emo nights on. I went to one before Christmas, emo. and it was like uh, it was just this big ballroom in sort of Clapham, Clapham Grand, I think, and. Uh, there was a big emo night on. Except like the people who DJed, they don't they didn't really play a lot of emo. They just played like quite a lot of sort of like Good Charlotte and Avril Lavigne and Ugh. stuff. And it's like, well, Ugh. it's not really emo, yeah. is it? I mean, like, I, I know it's a Saturday night and you got to get the punters in, but like, give us some Taken Back Sunday or I don't know some Yellow Card or something. I, I, I mean, come on, guys, <laughs> give me something. <laughs> when I first came to Japan, I started working with a Canadian guy, a friend of mine. Hmm. Um, who's still here, and he was like, oh, I met Avril Lavigne at a party in Ottawa. I was like, cool. What happened <laughs> then? He was like, did. she was kind of quiet, and yeah. That was the end of the story. I was <laughs> I like, love, wow. I love... The <laughs> thing is, though, if, you've not, <laughs> if you've not got a story, if you've not got a story about a celebrity, or if you've not got a story about someone, like it's, it's so kind of you, you you have to sort of invent something. Going, yes, you, you did not wash her hands after the <laughs> toilet. Like You have to invent something. I mean, I can't talk. I'm always going on about giving Elon Musk a birthday cake. These underwhelming, or Kenneth Branner in a shoe shop, or whatever. Like all these really underwhelming yeah. encounters that suck. Honestly, but I think Elon <sighs> Musk is stands apart as he's insane, <laughs> and also he <laughs> has dominated so much of our life um, through sheer force of finance. It's uh, yeah, absolutely it's a weird one. Absolutely. Mm. Twitter, X, nightmare. Anyway, let's crack on with the story of the day uh, from, and I'm afraid I don't know how to read this, T-I-J-M-E-N, Tijman, Tijman. It's a Dutch name, and I can't pronounce it, so somebody is going to have to tell me on Twitter, (laughs) or X, how it's pronounced. Anyway, uh, Tijman, we'll call him Tijman from the Netherlands, says, Hello, Chris and Pete. I've got a wild story from a study trip to Tokyo I did a few years back with our international student crew. So... After hitting a British pub on our first night, a Japanese girl and her Indian friend we bumped into invited us out for sushi at 4am. Most of us accepted mm. it and ex- headed onwards to this buzzing sushi joint where we talked and ate for another hour or so. The Indian guy even generously covered half our bill, a surreal experience given the hour. Having wrapped up our sleep-deprived adventures and now aching for bed, one of the organisers and a close buddy of mine got a call just metres from our hostel. Turns out... While we were on our impromptu sushi extravaganza, some other students were still at the bar. An Irish lad thought it'd be a grand idea to quickly relieve himself out on the nearest building, that building being the Russian embassy. Oh, good God. Oh. So long story oh. short, picture this. Unimpressed armed guards, an Irish student and a friend running on fumes, having to communicate apologies in various languages for a swift release. Despite the initial chaos, we left with nothing more than a telling off. And thus was... The, f- the first unforgettable memory we made in Japan. <laughs> the first. The first of many. Uh, keep up the good work, guys. Tijman from uh, Netherlands. His name I've butchered. Not so much a story as an encounter that luckily didn't go as badly wrong as it could have done. That could have gone on yeah. way, way worse. Oh my god! I, I like that the I like that the Indian friend managed to um, unlock the Indian finance for half the sushi. It's nice stuff. It's it's, it's good <laughs> stuff. Um, loop him in, um, but also like isn't a, down in like um, are the Russians being blamed down in Cuba for the Cuban like mystery weapon that have given all the people in the American embassy headaches? I presume it's closed down now because obviously they don't have diplomatic the relations microwave anymore. But like, the microwave. The, the, the popcorn Havana syndrome, in the head right? thing. Havana mm. syndrome, that's what they call it, yeah. Um, aren't, aren't the Russians believe that? Uh, you've got to be careful weighing on their embassy, that's all I'm saying. They could turn the tables on you. Havana syndrome. It's just too many people mm. fucking having mojitos and pina coladas in Cuba <laughs> after working <laughs> at the embassy. Nonsense. Uh, oh, it's you Havana it syndrome, isn't it? Yeah. Pete Donaldson's got Havana syndrome most Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It's fucking it's a microwave. Probably is a microwave weapon, though. In all seriousness, but we can only speculate. But uh, on the subject of nationality, this week uh, a report came out that eighty-seven percent of Very Japanese. Very enjoyable. I know, right? Lovely link. We're the best in the business. Eighty-seven uh, percent of Japanese people don't feel friendly towards China. Shock, horror, amazement, oh. except unless mm. you've been to Japan more than once. <laughs> this isn't a surprise at all. To be mm. fair, that is quite a high number. I think it's the highest I've ever seen it. Um, Phyllis yeah. and Pete, why is everyone in Japan not like China? What's going on? 
Well, I mean, I, I suppose we could point to any um, <laughs> any uh, item in the uh, in the menu in the receipt, I suppose, uh, with the two countries doing 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 what they've done over the years. But uh, a record eighty six point seven percent of Japanese do not feel friendly towards China. A Japanese government poll showed uh, as bilateral relations remain tense over a number of issues. The mail-in survey of three thousand Japanese nationals aged thirteen or over living in the country uh, received valid responses from uh, one and a half thousand people. The government started conducting similar polls in 1975 to help formulate its foreign policy. Never ask the people to formulate your foreign policy. Good God. Um, the record figure up no. from 81% in the previous survey to 86 uh, was the highest since the question was added in 78 to the annual diplomatic surveys conducted by the Cabinet Office. Mm. Um, probably something to do with the recent ban on marine products shipped from Japan to, to uh, China in pause last August after the uh, radioactive water discharge in the uh, uh, from Fukushima. Um, bilateral tensions have also grown uh, amid um, the Chinese vessels dicking about uh, near uh, Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea uh, that, are claimed by, that are claimed by Beijing, uh, which call them Daiyu. Um, and on a more positive note, uh, the survey showed an improvement in sentiment regarding South Korea, with 52.8% feeling they feel, saying they feel friendly towards the country, up from 45.9%. There's actually in in, uh, in England there's a, a bit of a um, situation that, that that grew and then kind of shriveled up. There was some um, kind of CCP um, uh, supporters at I think mm. I think it was King's Cross or um, might have been St Pancras Station in London, uh, and they were doing some kind of filming for the Chinese New Year. And there's a man on YouTube who. Uh, He's, he's just constantly um, playing the you know you know in like um, public uh, areas in, in in London you'll occasionally see like a piano that people will just yeah. somebody will just leave a sort of stand up piano and you can have a play if you're if you if you're so inclined um, which is which is you know it's quite a nice bit of public art you know nice nice little pub, bit of uh, public function uh, to go with those nails that they hammer mm. into the uh, into the benches so homeless people can't sit there so it's, it's you know weird sort of um, <laughs> sort of change there but. Um, <laughs> So yes. There's a man who there's there's a man who sort of goes around just playing this piano and he, he he's on YouTube and he you know he, he plays the the boogie woogie piano here and there and um, mm. uh, apparently uh, there's a video where uh, the, the CCP members basically just tell him to stop filming <laughs> and he's like going it's a free oh. country I'm allowed to do what I want and and he's a bit of a a dick and they're a massive dick and they just have this big sort of squabble about who's touching whose flag um, and so it's kind of like uh, so it's, it, it all becomes comes very um very aggressive very quickly uh and uh it's just an interesting little bit of oh the ccp they're all they're all around doing doing maneuvers <laughs> mm. yeah i mean it's not a surprise this isn't surprising every person i speak to in japan japanese folks are mm. unanimous in their dislike for for china it's unfortunate you know i've one of my best students was um half chinese and i've met lots of great chinese people here so it's always it always feels wrong to scapegoat everyone in a country right um while we're in recording the um a journey across japan episode that's coming out probably when this video has come out we went to an onsen mm. pete and i uh we there's a bus you have to take to get from like the car park into the onsen town because it's very remote you can't right. drive up to it so you have to take this bus and on one of the last but the last bus is out of the town we just mm. couldn't get on it because there was um quite a lot of chinese tourists They're a very big tour mm. group and there was about six of us me pete um, a few others in the crew, right? Ian and Sharla. And um, mm. we just couldn't get on the bus. And one of the tour guides, Chinese tour guide, was getting really angry at us for like trying to get on this bus. And we were getting really angry that we couldn't get on the bus because there was just a, a, so many pe Chinese tourist folks there. And I've never seen... Mm. I think Pete and I got really angry because this woman was just getting really angry and shouting at us in sort of broken <laughs> Chinese English, not letting us on the bus. But it's unfortunate. Um I'll never forget, I went to a uh, ryokan up in Tohoku once and uh, checked in with Sharla. I think it was like a Valentine's mm. Day thing. It can be romantic sometimes. Uh, mm. and we went there, got in the room, and the woman came in, the uh, the woman that ran the ryokan. And before really saying anything, she just went, oh, foreign, but thank God you're not Chinese. And we were like, oh, yeah. yeah. Great. And then she was like, when Chinese customers come, 
they eat the food and spit it on the floor. And she was like being really graphic. And I was like, regardless of whether or not this is the case, this isn't professional. You can't, no. when customers arrive, you don't go and start berating like another nationality like that. It was really weirdly mm. unprofessional, especially, you know, you, you don't really have that sort of encounter. Racist, really kind of honor. <laughs> no, I'm like, I've come for this romantic getaway in this lovely mm. traditional inn. Side and all I'm getting is, oh, yeah, just hearing this yeah. like awful rhetoric. Um, but yeah, I'm not surprised this has crept up given that uh, back in September last year, China did ban all Japanese seafood because of the Fukushima water being mm. released, um, which was mainly done out of politics, especially as Chinese, uh, the water around China is equally, if not more, polluted. Uh, yeah. I think for, because I there's think a lot also... more, there's tons of nuclear reactors spilling out uh treated and untreated water full of cesium along their coastline as well um mm. they like the the numbers are just as bad as japan if not worse scientists i think it's also way. i think it's also because you are um i mean obviously familiarity um when it when there's any kind of inter country uh, relations familiarity does breed contempt i'm sure the figures for um uh, britain and uh uh, the French, the French uh, would probably be exactly the same. To be honest, uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it, it just simply it goes because... deeper in Japan and China, though, doesn't it? I oh mean, yeah, there's definitely. I mean, there's, 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 I mean, there's war been war. a lot of very recent uh, um, sort of skirmishes and invasions uh, in their history. So, I mean, you mm. can understand why. Certainly, throughout my time living here, I've seen relations between Japan go up and down, um, but mostly down in the last few years mm. since the. Um, President Xi Jinping came into power in China. Uh, yeah. It doesn't seem, and, and obviously, with the threat of uh, war in Taiwan going up by the day, um, I yeah. think a lot of Japanese folks are uneasy about that and whatnot, um, and getting dragged into that as well. So, mm. yeah, I think that's why going back to how I started today's episode, the nostalgia around the the nineties. It was so wonderful, so magic. Yeah. And now it's like you open the newspaper, it's like World War Three, it's coming next Tuesday. And it's like, oh shit. I think it's because like, I think we we all kind of feel that way, but I think it's because we were all children in, in those decades. I was a child. Because we were a child. I mean I was to a to to let to a lesser extent. Let's make that very no, clear. You were, I am technically you, you were older. I was you were seventeen. I'm, I'm technically you a millennial were... by but but a very old one. About as old as a millennial can be. <laughs> uh but uh yeah, it's 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 sad. But it but we do kind of start when there's trouble on the horizon and we're grown up and we're having to deal with all of these horrible things, you know, world recessions and, and all this stuff, we do kind of start to regress into our into our nostalgia, and that's why mm. you know Barbies are <laughs> Barbies on the on the in the cinema making billions of pounds, and we just sort of we go back to where it all started for us and stuff because that's where we that's... find comfort. Uh, I say this <laughs> with a boggling literally behind me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the horrible creature, um, horrible, creature. and also on the subject of Barbie and Barbenheimer and all that, uh, I did hear mm. that Oppenheimer is finally getting released in Japan. I think in the right. second quarter of this year. Uh, okay. So it's. I saw it when I was overseas. Anyway, if I'd been waiting mm. around, I'd been very disappointed. Um, and not a lot of people. There's no real word on why they delayed it um, either. Mm. Obviously, at the time of it was released back in July last year, it was said to be out of politeness because of the uh, the anniversary of the bombings and whatnot. But um, yeah, yeah, it looks like it's coming out in March. Fingers crossed. Would I, would be tempted to go and see it again. It was very good. Who's going to be dubbing the uh, bomb? Who's going to be the voice of the bomb? The Japanese voice of the bomb? <laughs> That's what I don't Natsuki. know. Natsuki. 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 <laughs> no, Kaboom! Course. Might ruin oh, Oppenheimer somewhat. Take away yeah. any credibility. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I wish... I w it's, it's nice to see South Korea and Japan getting along a bit better. I don't think we reported it, but uh, after the earthquake recently, South Korea pledged some um, aid to the uh, the region of Notte, to help them through the earthquake, which is a really nice gesture. It went down very well here. Mm. Um, again, like South Korea and Japan, always at loggerheads over World War Two and the aftermath of that. But mm. I just, yeah, it's a shame. I wish all the countries could get on better, especially South Korea and Japan, given there's such similar countries at such a similar sort of development level and everything, and economically, I just yeah, wish they'd get I on mean, better. I think, t I think tactically, I mean, you, s I, I sort of worry, and you know, we won't get into, into politics because. 
goodness me if I ever express an opinion the YouTube comments do you would uh, never do that <laughs> enrage people never hear the end of it but um, I, I, you do fear of uh, a Donald Trump Republican um, uh, US situation simply because um, Xi Jinping will just go hey you know half my missiles may very well be filled with water I may my uh, my readiness <laughs> of my army may not be all that but um, I reckon it'll probably take Taiwan because uh, Donald Trump probably wouldn't um, wouldn't uh, seek to defend um, and then and, you know, so Japan has to kind of, mm. and, and North Korea will probably have a bit of a giggle as well. So uh, yeah, um, you, you do, you do sort of worry that, about yeah. the stability of the of not having a grown up in the room um, for the next four years. But yeah, you know, I'm yeah, just I mean, gonna play with my boglins. <laughs> it's it's uh, there is a good chance, yeah, if Trump does uh, become president, that there will be a greater degree of instability because America is less likely to commit to defending Taiwan amongst other things. A lot of, but... lot of raptors testing the fences over the last four years and uh, after mm. after COVID because obviously no one's got any bloody money to uh, to help defend other countries. It's going to be interesting. Mm. And by interesting, I... I mean fucking scary. Get Pete Donaldson conscripted back into the army. I heard the yeah. UK was tempted to look into it this year. They were, be, yeah, they were talking about uh, Pete Donaldson on the front lines. They were talking about conscription. They're going, yeah, yeah, good look at that one. <laughs> good look at that one. I don't think but, anyone's going to be that interested. <laughs> I think we, we're too busy on TikTok, guys. But yeah, no, I, I think definitely a very uncertain year ahead and um, mm. something we'll be discussing later on in the year, I'm sure. Uh, mm. We're we'll back in just a moment, guys, with your stories, comments, and questions in the fax machine. Wow. And we're back with the fax machine. What have we got this week from our listeners? Mr. Donaldson. I got a message from Filipino Pete, uh, my brother. My Filipino brother, Filipino Pete. Um, <laughs> hello, Centurion Chris and Priator Pete. Uh, my question is this. Is there anything we should be aware of when touring Japan with a baba? I'm going to be going with my sister and my baby nephew, and I want them to have a good time. Yet, I also worry about our group unintentionally inconveniencing others. The nephew's great. He's a good little boy. Uh, but you never know when kids <laughs> that young can start throwing a tantrum, especially in public. Any help or advice would be appreciated. Been listening to the show for quite a while now, and it's very awesome to see you both doing this on YouTube as well as as well as this. Uh, kind regards, Filipino Pete. Uh, baby changing facilities. I've recently um, had to deal with baby changing facilities in a couple of places. Uh, mm. My mate was uh, my mate's got a pen, um, and I was helping out. Um, it's there's not there seems to be uh, certainly in Essex a lot of provision for baby changing facilities in the female toilets, but not the men's. Very upsetting. Well, this is one of those questions where I have absolutely no real experience. I will say though, <laughs> lots of toilet. Yeah, like Japan is the yeah, king of just public lots of toilets. toilets around. Yeah, they're so yeah. they're so good. Like whenever I go, yeah. like when I was back in Canada last year. Uh, mm. I was mortified at the public toilets in comparison to Japan. Oh, or in the UK as well. Awful. In mm. Japan, very clean, very brand new mm. often, very nice and great. Yeah, that's that's one thing. Um, yeah. Anything else? I don't, yeah, anything else though? I'm, I'm not really a man for the job on that one, but I, th- I think Japan is a great place to uh, travel with a baby. Just be wary of the tiny hotel rooms. Can be kind of cramped, I guess, right? Mm. Being stuck in a tiny room with a crying baby. Yeah, ain't gonna be yeah. fun. Uh, we got one here from Tyson who says, "Hello, Chikan, Chris, and Puru. What's that? Puru Resu, oh pro wrestler. Puru Resu, Puru Resu, Pete. I'll be setting off my very first solo <laughs> trip to Japan in late January. My question is, if I were to walk in any convenience store, um, and after pointing at something I wanted and paying, would I be upsetting anyone by thanking the store clerk with a joyous Arigato Kombini San? <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking hell. It sounds funny and playful to me, but I'd rather not be walking around with my awful Japanese upsetting strangers. Mm. Thanks for the wonderful podcasts. Fingers crossed we'll get Natsuki one day on the podcast. All the best, Tyson. Um I wouldn't wouldn't necessarily <laughs> go don't, with that one. <laughs> don't do that. It's kinda like you know, you wouldn't walk into a fucking Walmart and be like, Arigato Walmart San to the person at the <laughs> checkout, right? They'd be like, what are you on about? Get out. Arigato. <laughs> Tesco, man. Don't do it. They'll just think you're weird. <laughs> uh, we got one last one from Annie. He says, hello, Creaky Chris and Parsi Pete. My husband keeps asking me why the Abroad Japan videos all have stars in the thumbnails now, at least for the last year. Chris, oh. is this some sort of clever algorithmic design or way to get more views on YouTube? Thanks, Chris has Annie. joined a cult. Chris has joined yeah. a cult. He's joined like it's a, a weird cult that Can't he has tell to you put why. stars in all of the thumbnails. <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be a big, yeah, like, yeah. that. what's that thing that people point at their eye? 
or something is supposed to be a conspiracy. Oh, so when you, when people sort of take pictures of like Beyonce and she's doing a triangle or something like, look, Illuminati. Conspiracy. <laughs> it's Illuminati again. Illuminati. <laughs> It's an Illuminati conspiracy and definitely not a way <laughs> to boost the click-through rate by making a contrast in the thumbnail. Um, yeah, generally right. I f- I did it because I thought it was it would increase the click-through rate. And so far as right. I could tell, it has worked. I don't know why mm. it, or how. Don't know the magic behind it really, but yeah, it does work. Having a thumb, having a, oh. a star in in certain thumbnails no that idea. are relevant to the topic, like hotel or restaurant kind of thing um, honestly man i could i could be doing this show for 20 years and we will chris yeah. um oh, but I, and right i will there. never <laughs> figure out what makes a good thumbnail <laughs> it is <sighs> for, it is by its very nature formulated but i just do not understand the formula <laughs> well the most successful thumbnails are the ones that aren't that don't look too photoshopped that's rule number one right always try and take something that looks natural Holding right. a food or doing something in the moment and also holding something, doing something. If it's just right. you standing there, it doesn't really work. You've got to be doing something related to the title. So, so there is a, a sort of science to it, a psychology to it. Didn't help me on the latest video. That bombed off a cliff. Uh, the Dr. Jelly music video making that video. I I um, I nearly didn't release the video because it was the one where we made the Dr. Je- uh, Dr. Jelly music video in a school. Mm-hmm. I nearly mm. didn't release it because the weather was really bad. It fucked our plans, and I was really tired that day. And mm. it's a it's it's a shit video. It's the only video in Journey Across Japan that I think is objectively <laughs> just shit. However, we made a Doctor Jelly music video, which is kind of good. And I had yeah, to salvage good, that good, and put it good in. Good tune. Yeah, good tune. Well, the tune's good. So what I'll do Ian's is I'll leave up it. a few days. <laughs> Ian is in it, and he's great. Ian's in but, it, but like. Just nothing happens in the video because the weather was right. rubbish and we were kind of stuck in this corner of Akita where there's nothing on a rainy day, as beautiful as it is. Mm. So, unfortunate. And I probably will unlist it from YouTube. So if you're watching this, enjoy the video titled I Tried Filming a Music Video in a School because it will be gone very soon. Uh, mm. As is, I, I think quality control is really important. I don't like putting up videos that are kind of not worthy of a viewer's time and this is one that's dangerously mm. close to that but uh dr jelly's worth it i hope you enjoyed the video guys jerry did a great job bashing that song out in like 25 minutes writing it in the corner of mm. an abandoned school <laughs> the man's a mag- <laughs> a magician he's pure magic is old he jerry did, i I'm, i was a bit annoyed that he didn't rhyme jelly with skelly like shot for skeleton he, he went for the full skeleton i was like just say skelly i know what you mean <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't think people would have got I wouldn't have got that I wouldn't have got that no. good lyrics okay, though good right, lyrics fair. and a cracking good video <laughs> check it out but for now guys keep the stories questions comments coming into a broad Japan podcast at gmail.com we'll be back later in the week to do all over again but for now no matter where you might be out there in the big wide world of yourself a great few days we'll see you right back here to do it all over again on the broad Japan podcast bye for now <laughs>